today we are going to be talking about how to save time particularly around difficult situations or transitions with your child so i don't know about you but i have found that when my children have big feelings or resistance or defiance particularly when they were younger that I would start to feel a sense of anxiety and anxiousness come up inside of me because I'm trying to stick to a schedule right like we got to go places we got to get you know we have things to do places to be people to see um, and when someone refused to put their shoes on or you know had a meltdown or you know suddenly was so hungry they couldn't function or all these things that tend to interrupt the flow of things i would start to feel really really anxious because i knew that that was going to derail the plans and i knew that the the best way to handle those situations was to like get down on their level and have a conversation with them validate their feelings all of these things all these things that i teach now but I was worried that those things would take too long, right? Does this come up for you that you're like, well, yeah, like sitting with a tantrum seems like maybe that's a nice idea, but like who has time for that? But what I wanna share with you is that in fact, doing it this way, and I'll go into a little more detail about what I mean by this way, um, but doing it in this way actually buys you more time in the long run. And the reason is that when you're dealing with resistance, you, if you continue to engage that resistance, it's going to persist. So you may have heard the phrase, what you resist persists. And this is so true with children, that if they are resisting putting on their shoes, for example, and you are resisting leaning into the emotion of that, you just get into a power struggle where they don't wanna do the thing you're asking them to do, you don't want to deal with the situation and so no shoes get put on and you're late to the thing um, and so what i would like to suggest instead is that we work on here's how it would look your child is refusing to put on their shoes it's time to go you only have them enough time to get to the place you're going to you don't really have extra time i've been t i have been terrible in parenting at building an extra time. It's something that we all know we're supposed to do, but I'm terrible at it. So um, so I get the stress of like, we only have 15 minutes to get there and I didn't build in time for this tantrum or this defiance, right? Um, however, the way this looks is, you know, say your child's refusing to put on their shoes, you're just gonna get down on their level and offer them a ton of empathy. Like, I know sometimes shoes feel really tight, don't they? Those shoes are uncomfortable. I know it's really hard or do you want to wear these shoes or these shoes and let them choose and maybe they won't choose one of the pairs and so you'll have to choose for them but offering a, just a ton of empathy and validating those feelings and letting the resistance like leaning into the resistance so that you're not reinforcing it you're actually diffusing it by again getting down on their level the lower you get to the ground, you actually sort of um, slow down your energy and it helps to your child to calm down. So getting low to the ground, making eye contact, bringing your voice down so that you're, you're communicating a sense of calm and then just a ton of empathy. I know sometimes it's, sometimes it's annoying to have to put on shoes, but we have to go now. So I'm going to ask that you put your shoes on or, you know, can you, scoop them up and put them in the car and put the shoes on in the car but my point here is that embracing the fact that you don't know how long it might take to process those feelings or to um, manage that resistance without without reinforcing it however when your child feels seen and heard and validated they're just so much more likely to relax and go with you, go with the flow, put the shoes on, do the thing. Because when they're stuck in that feeling of resistance and they don't feel validated, they're just gonna stay right where they are. If they're not feeling validated and they don't feel 
seen and heard, they're just going to stay right where they are. And so shoes won't get put on, you know, child won't get in the car and nothing moves forward. But when kids feel seen and validated, they just tend to, their energy comes down. They might still not put their shoes on. Like, let's be real about the logistics of this. They might not put their shoes on. However, they probably will stop crying. They probably will stop screaming. They will see and feel that you see and feel them. Um, and, and this just goes such a long way toward smoothing, you know, smoothing the, smoothing the road ahead. Um, I used to work with a woman who said, she would say, go, what did she say? Um, go slow to go fast. I think she would say, go slow to go fast. Meaning sometimes we have to slow down, especially with children. We got to slow down in order to make things flow more smoothly. And some of that involves just embracing the fact that right now things might not go on my timeline, but I don't know about you, but I would so much rather preserve my relationship with my child in that moment than be on, than try to be on time to something I'm already going to be late to. So again, with the shoe example, I would just, it's not worth compromising my relationship with my child for them to put on their shoes and get in the car. And if we're going to be late anyway, I would rather be late and be in integrity with my child than be late and everyone's screaming and feels terrible and no one has shoes on anyway. <laughs> so, um, so I hope this tip is helpful for you this week. If you give this a try, please let me know in the comments how it went. And I hope you have a wonderful week. See you soon.